Why did I buy all that popcorn and candy? Ah, oh, it's hot. <sighs> Hello, everybody that I totally saw there the whole time and can't be bothered to feign not knowing you were there. Let's do a catch-up thing that I haven't done and practice some editing techniques. Put a thing here and move it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly, similar to Half in the Bag, which that new intro totally didn't mean to rip them off, but yeah, it's a similar idea. Um, similar to them, and they did their end of year catch up thing, I'm going to talk about much faster and less long winded. Talk about all the movies that I've seen since starting to do this that I haven't talked about in a tone video, either because I didn't feel like it warranted a whole video and more likely I was too lazy and unmotivated to just make a specific video for that thing. Um, so, do, 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 do. I have my thing. I have no idea if it's going to focus because I'm not monitoring the visuals at all. Um, but I have my viewing history in MoviePass right here. And it shouldn't be that long. And we've already covered the first six which are It, which I didn't think was good, The Emoji Movie, which I didn't think was the worst thing in the world, Kingsman, bad, but probably not as bad as it would have been had I actually seen the first Kingsman, uh, Blade Runner 2049 is still fantastic, Rewatched it last night, still really good. Uh, My Little Pony the Movie, I don't remember much other than it being pretty okay, Happy Death Day, best groundhog movie I've seen in a while since Live, Die, Repeat, um, otherwise known as Edge of Tomorrow. Um, Happy Death Day was good. Okay, so on to some things that I have not talked about. The Foreigner with Jackie Chan. This is the weirdest Jackie Chan movie that exists because Jackie Chan's whole shtick is I don't want no trouble. That is his signature line and it keeps you from ever thinking that he's the bad guy but in the foreigner not only does he definitely want trouble because he's getting revenge for his daughter who just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time was killed by a terrorist attack by the IRA um, but the things that he does, coincidentally, don't really cause anything to move any quicker than it otherwise would. Pierce Brosnan's character was pressured from many different sources in the movie to get the information that he needed to um, speed things along and put these people behind bars. So, Jackie Chan, like, understandably wants revenge but he goes about it in very extreme ways. Um, I'm not sure that he actually kills anyone until maybe the end, and he definitely leads to a room full of people being dead if he didn't kill them himself at the end of the movie. Um, he gets his revenge. Pierce Brosnan's character is ruined, Eh, it was, it was alright. It's just really weird seeing um, Jackie Chan be sort of a bad guy. Moving on to Suburbicon. I hate Matt Damon. And I like the Coen Brothers, but I can't remember if this was like the Coen Brothers just gave up this script and then George Clooney took it and did his thing, but... If it can be considered a Coen Brothers movie, it's the weakest one I've seen of theirs. Really big fan of The Big Lebowski, as evidenced by the dude sweater that I have, but I'm not wearing right now, obviously, but it was in a previous video. Was it in a previous movie night video? I don't know. Definitely in a drink video, though. Um, 
so Suburbicon has like two parallel plot things happening. One is the escalating racism aimed at the black neighbors of the main family. And then the other is Matt Damon's character covering up this like murder insurance fraud thing. And both of these completely unrelated plots come to their boiling points at the same time. Like, conveniently there's a lynch mob burning down this black family's house when a bunch of shit is going down in Matt Damon's house and it, like, masks the noise or distracts the cops or whatever because he winds up running out of his house covered in blood and nobody bats an eye because they're too busy being racist. Um, but it it's weird. It builds up to not really go anywhere. Also, the insurance inspector guy kept making me think of Gomez Adams. So, that movie was okay. It's probably the best Matt Damon movie I've seen. Certainly the best one I'm going to talk about. Um, but, yeah. I, I don't like Matt Damon. He always plays weird, awkward, unrespectable doormats. I don't know. Like, the plot always just happens to him, or it happens around him. Which, when we get to downsizing, I'll explain even more. So, next, Thor Ragnarok. I didn't bother to make a Thor Ragnarok video, because who the hell is going to come to my channel for Hollywood blockbuster comic book movie of the month advice? Thor Ragnarok was fun. Um, the trailer actually spoils the entire movie because they used Immigrant Song in the trailer and all the Asgardians emigrate from Asgard when the, uh, the climax happens. When they realize, oh my god, there's no way we can beat uh, Helma? Hela? Hella, I think, was her name. Uh, there's no way we can beat her unless we go with the prophecy that was foretold in the very first scene of this movie and as just like, ah, fuck that. I'll, I'll beat this guy and then there will be nothing of this prophecy left. Um, and the prophecy is for Asgard to be destroyed. So they let that happen. And then they have to move. So they are immigrants. Immigrant song. I thought that was kind of neat. I wonder how many people caught that. Uh, next, Murder on the Orient Express. <clears throat> I don't remember if I made a video about this. I think I might have, but if I didn't, or if I did, I'll reiterate, I did not like Murder on the Orient Express once I got to the ending. Uh, all throughout the movie it was fun. I liked Poirot, and then he sells out his principles at the very last minute and just lets everybody go because, spoilers, everybody did it. That's the answer to the murder mystery. That's the answer to the who done it is who, everyone. Next we have Justice League. Oh boy, Justice League. I still sort of want to give this one its own video because there is a goofy thing that I wanted to do. There's like two goofy things I wanted to do. Um, one was I couldn't get over how weird Cyborg's walking animation was because he always walks like this. And nobody else in the movie does that. No one does this. So he's like walking around like this in dark night in a hoodie because he's a creepy robot man and nobody can know that. But I just picture him, I picture him like walking through a grocery store with a hoodie on and his hood up and he just got this bright red flashlight sticking out of his face. Um, and then the other thing was there are a lot of superhero landings in Justice League. Like you could set your watch by the superhero landings in this shit. It's to the point that there are three superhero landings right in a row when they hop out of a vehicle. 
and it's like a a scale of um <laughs> i think batman jumps out first and like the the camera is set in such a way that the their butts just come into frame like past the past the bumper of the car because the camera shot is under the bumper so batman does it and you're like oh batman but then wonder woman does it and you're like yeah gal gadot but and then cyborg does it and you're like oh my god cyborg is thick <laughs> so that was lame uh steppenwolf looked like something out of mortal kombat he just i couldn't stop seeing shao khan every time he was on screen there's a couple times where uh, say Wonder Woman and Steppenwolf will be like on a 2D plane basically and it looks like an Injustice screenshot um, and then there's another time that Superman and Steppenwolf are doing the same thing and it just it looks like Injustice again uh, next the Disaster Artist which I did make a video for I did not like the Disaster Artist then we have the Shape of Water, which I never made a video for, but I'm not sure that I could do that much justice. Um, shape of Water is really good. It was like, uh, who's the real monster? It's humans. It, that's that's the general gist of the Shape of Water, which I think is kind of the general gist of a lot of Guillermo del Toro movies, except for Pacific Rim, even though. At, right at the start of Pacific Rim, they're like, to fight monsters... Or, no, it's the tagline of the movie. It's, to fight monsters, we created monsters. Um, so, yeah, Shape of Water. It's cute. It's normalizing fish furries. Uh, we have Ladybird. You all know how much I fucking hate Ladybird. Uh, or... More accurately, no no one knows how much I hate Ladybird because that's probably my least watched <laughs> video. <laughs> Fuck Ladybird. Ladybird's the worst. It actually is the worst movie on this uh, in my viewing history, I think. Like downsizing, which is next for me to talk about. I liked better than Ladybird. Even though Downsizing forgot what it was doing, like, 20 minutes into the movie. Because what it looks like from the trailer is uh, Matt Damon is like, Oh my god, this, this turning small thing makes you rich. And then you can just live a life of leisure with your significant other or whatever the hell situation you want. And you can just have a grand old time. And I was more interested in seeing, like, a goofy comedy where that's all they do. Like, just explore what kind of silly things can we do with people being small. Because there were some funny things in the trailer, such as the people being carried in in the box, or everyone pouring, um, like, giant... Or they're, they're, like, filling their own bottles of vodka from one normal size bottle of vodka, which I don't think that that's how fluid dynamics work, because they were essentially just filling bottles with a drop. And I don't think that you can do that with surface tension and everything. But, um, yeah. It, once, once the twist that's revealed in the trailer happens where his wife does not come with him to be small um they get divorced off screen and then he's not rich so he's just some guy again so that happened to him then he gets involved with hong chow's character and she has him do a whole bunch of stuff and he's being the matt damon doormat that he is he just goes along with it and things keep happening to him. And he never takes control until the very last scene, sort of, where he decides, no, I don't want to follow these cultists underground, even though I followed these cultists into ruining my life already once. I'm just going to decide not to do it again, 
even though I suddenly care about the environment and all this shit. Like, it becomes some weird humanitarian environmentalist thing. Which was the framing device for the downsizing being created at the start. So it's not like it completely comes out of nowhere, it's just weird in how it's executed. And it, it like, continuously forgets where it was going to the point that Christoph Waltz's character only exists, like, he's set up as this rich guy, and then two-thirds through the movie, he is the thing that facilitates transporting Matt Damon's character to the finale destination. But other than that, he doesn't actually do anything. He's just, the tr he's the vehicle that moves him. Um, and then the last one that I've seen, although I'm going to see The Commuter, which I think I mentioned, uh, is Paddington 2. And Paddington 2 warrants me talking about Paddington 1, because the only issue I had with either Paddington 1 or 2 is that the opening scene for Paddington 2 is a flashback in which... Paddington's aunt and uncle are sitting on a bridge, I think, fishing or something? Uh, and then a little cub comes floating down the stream and they save him. And at some point in this scene, Paddington's signature hat winds up on his head. And I cannot remember where that hat was at the start of the opening to Paddington 2 like it must have been on the uncle's head but the opening to Paddington 1 I could have sworn that those three were a family already and that the hat didn't exist yet because it was given to them by the explorer now having said that I realized after thinking this, that um, between the explorer giving the hat and Paddington going to London, there's a decent time jump to the point where when he... Uh, a reveal in Paddington 1 is that the explorer died. So some time happened, and that would mean that Paddington would have aged from being a baby. But I, I could have sworn that the... Um, the explorer gave the hat to Paddington, but I don't remember, and I need to go back and rewatch that movie to get context for the opening scene of the second movie, because it, it just weirded me out because it seemed like a very strange retcon, but I think it might have just been I was making a mistake. Um, and then the only other thing I can really say that was strange to me, specifically, is I thought that the bad guy in Paddington 2 was Ed Helms the whole time. I don't even remember who the actor actually is, but I thought that was Andy from The Office, and it totally was not. Um, but they look so alike, and Andy does theater, and does a bunch of goofy Cockney accents all the time in The Office, so... Uh, Alright, I, I think it was a, like easy mistake to make uh, so now I'm all caught up on movie nights so enjoy the new intro and possibly the new editing with you know effort put in um, I will try to actually keep up with my movies and make a video for the commuter when I'm done with that so, I will see you in the next one.